Welcome to the Midweek Teas with me, Adele Onyango, where I share some random and not too random thoughts on things. And in this episode, let's talk about why you should define beauty for yourself. Now, I used to have one specific thought on plastic surgery, and it was that if we fight for women to have autonomy over their bodies, then that includes having the right to decide that they want to have plastic surgery. When I was younger, I remember, I think I was about 15 or 16, there was this craze to have plump lips, which is crazy if you think about it now, because my lips are just fine. Like, they're pretty plump. (laughs) So why did I think they needed to be plumper? And I remember finding this medical lip gloss that when you apply would plump in your lips. I applied it once and that thing started tingling. (laughs) And I did not wait for any next steps. I ran straight to wash it the heck off. Now, two things can be true, right? That we have autonomy over our bodies and what we want to do with them. And for years, this hasn't been the case and continues to not be the case for very many women. But let's not forget that we women don't exist in a vacuum. There is an entire society that tells us our bodies are not enough as they are. From when we are pretty young. So I'm Luo, which is a tribe here in Kenya. Most women from my tribe are full figured. They have curves for days. (laughs) I have curves, but they're just not as pronounced. And it wasn't too bad in my case, but I did hear the occasional statement that made me wonder If my body being different was a problem, you know, I distinctly remember a family member telling me I look more like the men in my family than the women. And they were not saying it in a jokey way. But I since realized that particular family member is a bit strange. (laughs) So that was a them issue, not me, you know. Then there is the beauty definitions and standards that are pushed at women consistently. Your skin has got to be light. Why? Your derriere has got to be big. Why? Your chest needs to be pronounced. Why? You've got to be curvaceous. Why? Your hair, your lips. I'll tell you why. This is a projected beauty definition that is crafted from this male gaze or what is assumed that men want, which brings me back to my autonomy point. So how much autonomy do you have over your body if the decision to alter it is influenced by what society defines as beautiful as per the male gaze? And let's not forget good old colonialism that taught us attributes that are very African aren't beautiful. So if we start diving into nose jobs and things like that. But that one, I feel like requires a whole other episode on its own. I've really been thinking about this because it's no coincidence that the most popular surgeries are in line with what society has decided is beautiful when it comes to women. The flat tummies, the big bums, the big breasts, you know what I mean? It's very important to interrogate each and every thought that walks across your mind. It may sound true, but perhaps it's the result of years of conditioning. And after you interrogate those thoughts, if you find that this is indeed your own thought, by all means, proceed with claiming that autonomy over your body by making the decision you deem fit. Telling women to accept the bodies they are in without addressing the environment that reminds them how not enough they are is disingenuous. Since forever, beauty standards and definitions have been evolving, which is why I find it terribly dangerous to base how you view yourself through that lens. There was a time and in some cultures where being full of figured was seen as more desirable because it was believed to portray wealth. And then there was a time in some cultures where being slimmer was where it's at. Over time, youthfulness was added to the desirability mix as well, which then meant it's wrong and shameful for a woman to show signs of a very natural process, aging. (laughs) Most anti-aging products aren't products to help you age stronger or healthier, but to help you mask the signs of aging aging something that is not only natural but it's a luxury as well like every new day we get it's not automatic that we're going to be here it also doesn't help that 
we log on to social media where very unrealistic and unattainable beauty standards are pushed down our throats every single day day just like conditioning us to believe that something is wrong with our bodies or worse yet that to be successful we need to look a certain way and to adopt that as true in a world where the people who do get the job look a specific way makes the environment ripe for you and I to think that something is definitely wrong with our bodies I remember an interview a few years ago of a celebrity here in Kenya saying the reason that she decided to bleach her skin was so she could get more jobs and book more gigs and guess what the lighter she got the more gigs she was booking yeah I've recently come to a deep appreciation of my body you know like I fully understand that it's fighting for me all the time it's on my side and it's not this weak thing that I should be ashamed of it is a powerful warrior It is my one true home. It is my defender. It is intelligent. Do you know how many things within you are working for your good in your body? Like it's hectic. It is deserving of honor, acceptance, appreciation, and love. And I'm on this journey to slowly and learning that I have to look a certain way, you know, as per society's definition of beauty. There's definitely space in my life for me to unlearn a lot of things in terms of my relationship with my body. But I'm pretty glad that I have started that journey. And I just want this episode to be a reminder to you to start that journey too. So what do I want you to take away? Number one, you don't have to believe every thought you have about your body. Really interrogate if it's truly your own thought or one that you've been socialized to believe. Number two, How are you contributing to this environment that makes women feel less than about their bodies? What statements are you saying? Is there representation of women of all shades and shapes in your campaigns, in your business, in the things you're shooting? Do you hold oppressive biases? Really introspect about this. And lastly, we weren't meant to all look a certain way. Beauty is diverse, but most importantly, define it for yourself. Society is just too fickle to leave that up to them. Thanks for listening to The Midweek Tease, a Legally Clueless Africa production. Episodes go out every Wednesday and you can learn more about us by going to LegallyCluelessAfrica.com. Hi, I'm Adele Onyango, host of Legally Clueless, a show where Africans share stories of their lived experience of love. You know the way uh, now you're married, you're supposed to live with your husband and go to your home. I didn't. I stayed with my mother, I think, for weeks. Childhood. Talking about my childhood and being sent to approved schools when I was nine because my parents believed that I was uh, indisciplined. Family. If you're going to have a sit down with my grandmother, that's cool. As for me, myself and I, I'm not sleeping under this roof tonight. And so much more. You have unspecified bipolar. And that didn't mean anything to me because I did not know what that was. Catch Catch us every Monday, everywhere you find podcasts.